Ministries Seeking God to impact nations Thank you very much and I, I want to thank God for this opportunity The, the, the message is the Spirit said talk about spiritual restoration Apostle already defined restoration, restitution, but in this case we have five hours of restoration. We have renewal, refreshing, what is it, rebuffish, all oh, these are there, five of them. Renewal, refresh, return, because God is telling us throughout the Bible, return to me, you people, you have gone away, return, return back to me. Yes? Basi, yes. Basi najua kuwa mtume tayari ameshaeleza maana ya kure, kurejeshwa na kurejeshewa. Lakini nataka pia nizungumze na kusema kuwa katika urejesho kuna hizi R5 maneno ambayo yanaanza na R kwa, kwa, kwa lugha ya Kiingereza ambao ni renewal kufanya upya, re, revive, revive kuishwa, re, return. Uh, go, uh, yes, continue. Return kurejeshwa. Yes, refresh. Ah, uh, na pia kuburudishwa ama kuburudishwa ama kuburudishwa upya and renew na kufanywa upya all this is of the spirit haya yote ni ya rohoni we are not talking about the material the physical the emotional but although emotional can be also part of the spiritual restoration bado hatujaanza kuzungumzia kuhusu hivi vya damu na nyama vya kushikika kama vile hisia Na, nafsi zetu yani na pia hilo ni urejesha and I, as i was studying about the topic i just i was thanking god apostle for you then i said because in my mind in my spirit he has re, he has restored you spiritually physically materially and emotionally isn't that correct na katika kuandaa ujumbe huu nilikuwa wakati wa give glory to god give a ni, clap ni for apostle tumpigie bwana makofi kwa ajili ya mtume ambaye nilimshukuru Mungu sana yeah. kwa ajili ya Mungu kumrejesha yes. wakati naanda nikamshukuru Mungu kwa kumrejesha uh, uh, mtume kiroho nafsi yake lakini pia mwili wake lakini pia mali zake so but the, the point here is the basis or the real foundation of the spiritual restoration has to be that you have been born again you have received Jesus Christ as your lord lakini and savior lakini nianze kwa kusema kuwa msingi wa kurejeshwa ni jambo hili la kiroho muhimu sana ya kuwa lazima uwe umeokoka umezaliwa mara ya pili and then alafu then all the other restoring things the physical the emotional every other one hangs on this one alafu urejesho wote wa kiroho mwilini na nafsi nanga yake ni msingi huu wa kuzaliwa mara ya pili that is why we are told in matthew 6:33 seek first what na ndio maana tumeambiwa katika matayo 6:33 kwanza tafuteni kwanza nini and na, na nini righteousness na haki yake and all these things will be na mengine haya ta so you see the, the Bible the Bible what God says is true and it must come to pass Kwa if you do it Biblia Biblia yale ambao Mungu anayasema ni kweli na lazima tuiamini ili yaje yatimie So then the question is Kwa hivyo swali ni hili And I asked this in Bible study this morning Na nimeuliza hili katika darasa la leo asubuhi because part of it is as I, I wanted to talk about people that I I believe were saved people like Paul people like the, the Samaritan woman people like in, uh, this n- n- thing is Zacchaeus apostle se- separate i mean favorite person and even the jailer the jailer in the in the in the jail i wanted to start with those but the holy spirit said no i want you to start with the churches seven churches <laughs> specifically the church in Tyra, the church in Ephesus, and the church in where the worst of them, like this here. I'm na, telling you. Katika ujumbe huu, na hili ni same yake. Yes. Nikuwa, nilitaka kuzungumza kuhusu watu ambao Biblia imetueleza, mm. walikuwa bada jaokoka, bada waka okolewa. Yeah. Na mkumbuka Paulo, yeah. ambaye aliokolewa. Mm-hmm. Na mkumbuka Zakayo, yes. ambaye mama 
ma, mtume anampenda Favorite. sana. Yeah. Anampenda kuliko wote. Yes. Zakayo. <laughs> Na pia <laughs> eh? Na, na pia yule ambaye alikuwa ni mtunzi ama askari katika gereza lile ambalo Paulo alifungwa yes. yeye pia aliokolewa yes. lakini nilipotaka kuanza na hayo yes. Roho Mtakatifu akasema subiri yeah. nataka kuanza uanze na makanisa yale saba yeah, 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 yeah. katika kitabu cha ufunuo kanisa la Laodicea la Efeso la Smyrna na kama hayo Yes but, but the point is before I have the scriptures and I have put these churches at the end as part of but the spirit says no I, you start with these churches because I want to talk to Zion and ourselves that's why I was convicted I felt almost scared Sasa katika ujumbe wangu nilikuwa nimeandaa nianze na hao watu ambao nimewataja alafu makanisa baadaye na maandiko ninayo lakini Roho Mtakatifu akanihudumia akaniambia nataka nizungumze kwa kanisa la Zion ambapo pia mimi ni sehemu yake nikabadilisha nitaanza na makanisa Do you know Revelation is the only book that says those who read it are blessed Do Je, you know that kuwa ufunuo ndicho kitabu pekee ambacho kimeandikwa na kusema wanaokisoma hicho kitabu wamebarikiwa Put yourself as one of the seven churches Zion cities Hebu jiweke kama moja wapo ya makanisa hayo saba kanisa hili la Zion What would Jesus right to us. Yesu atatuandikia nini? Really, what would he say Katika about us? Katika barua yake atasema nini kuhusu sisi? Not only Zion but each person like myself. Isitoshe, hey. sio kanisa la Zion tu, lakini mimi binafsi, Yesu kama ataniandikia barua what atasema nini kuhusu mimi? How do you say you love him and yet you don't do what he says? Utawezaje kusema unampenda Yesu ili hali hufanyi anachokitaka wewe ukiba? Apostle, I say I love God, but when I look at myself, I fall so short. I don't come to the, all the services. I, the only thing I do, I come on time, but I don't go morning glory. I don't go lunch hour. I don't come in. Hey, I say. Mtume hey, anasema mimi nampenda Mungu, lakini najiona kuwa bado na mapungufu. Kwa mfano siji katika mm. ibada zote yeah. ibada ya asubuhi lakini yeah. ingawaje kama nitakuja nitakuja kwa muda unaofaa lakini najiona kama bado napungukiwa and in these churches Jesus has very high standards It's excellence na katika makanisa haya saba tunaona kuwa viwango vya Yesu ni vya juu vya ubora and this year the year of diligence to maximize our harvest. Na huu hey. ndio huu ndio mwaka tumeambiwa ni mwaka wa bidii ili kujaza That's what you are saying apostle. You Sasa, keep on telling us do this do that. Api. You are part of this but we are what? Look warm. God will throw us out. Tunakusikia kila siku ukituambia fanyeni hili. Fanyeni hili. Husikeni, husikeni, hus, husikeni hapa na pale lakini bado tunapungukiwa. God loves us as you have said apostle. Mungu anatupenda ulivyosema mtume. But he wants us to show how much we love him. Lakini anataka tudhihirishe jinsi gani tunampenda. But let me just get a, a, a short turn. I give you a short run through the Bible just for, for a second. Hebu tuende kwa kasi kidogo kupitia kwenye maandiko kwenye Biblia wewe na mimi tusibaki nyuma twende yes. pamoja. The whole the whole the whole bible from genesis to revelation biblia nzima kuanzia mwanzo hadi ufunuo the word restoration is used 136 times neno urejesho limetumiwa mara 136 if you think about it in the old testament they seem to be talking about more about material physical restoration kama utakuwa makini utagundua kuwa katika agano la kale walizungumza sana kuhusu urejesho wa mali mwilini yes but when we come to the new testament then we see this spiritual this spiritual restoration lakini tukija katika agano jipya tunaona urejesho huu wa kiroho yani yes. msisitizo msisitizo uko hapo the old testament it was Israel had an, a covenant of law with God. Agano la kale Israeli walikuwa na agano wameingia kwenye agano na Mungu. But we live in a covenant of grace through Jesus Christ. Lakini sisi tume, tunaishi katika agano la neema kupitia Yesu Kristo. Because of course you know that we are saved not by any work, not circumcision, not by giving, but by grace through 
faith. Kwa sababu tunafahamu kuwa tumeokolewa si kwa kutahiri miili yetu lakini tumeokolewa sio kwa kutoa ni kwa neema kupitia imani katika Kristo Yesu. So as Genesis starts we are we are told 1 to verse 1 between verse 1 and 2 God recreated he actually to the uh, the earth had no form it had been destroyed after Ki, Lucifer's flood Kitabu cha mwanzo kinapoanza tunaambiwa kuwa Mungu aliumba upya katikati ya mstari wa kwanza na wa pili tunajua palitokea kitu pale ni ile garika ya Lucifero kwa hivyo Mungu ikampasa aumbe upya And he was so so angry with what satan had done he had led a rebellion so to go up and usurp the, the power of god mungu, na mungu alikuwa amegadhabishwa sana kwa kile ambacho kilikuwa kimetokea kupitia lucifero ambaye kwa kiburi akataka apande juu achukue kiti na mamlaka ya mungu jambo hilo and, and that is where we find him in Isaiah 14:12 to, to to 14 and Ezekiel 28 11 to, to to 17 we find him saying i will ascend i will be like the most high na ndio maana tunakutana naye tunakutana andiko katika kitabu cha Isaya 14 12 hadi 14 na pia ukiangalia Ezekiel 28 17 kuhusu huyu uh, Lucifero ambaye alikuwa kwa kiburi anasema nitapanda juu na nitwae mamlaka yale so So he was talking from pride pride pride. Ni kiburi ambacho kilikuwa kinamsukuma huyu. But we also know as soon as he went up he was cast down. Revelation Lakini tunafahamu kuwa punde tu alipotaka kupaa alishushwa. Revelation 12:7 to 17 he was cast down and he took a third of the angels with him. Ufunuo 12 inasema kuwa ali alishushwa ali tupo chini lakini aliondoka na theluthi moja ya malaika so you can see how furious he was that god would do this he came now to the garden that is when he now decided his people i'm going to deceive this na, adam and eve tumejuzwa pia kuhusu mm. hasira aliyokuwa yeah. nayo kwa sababu mm. ya kutupwa chini akafanya ujanja wake aingie kwenye bustani ili tu kubadilisha mambo and that is where we find the story but we know in genesis 126 to 31 god created all of us and everything was beautiful in his own image and gave adam na hapo all the power vurugu ilipoingia na dhambi mm. ilipoingia lakini tunafahamu katika mwanzo sura ya kwanza mstari wa 26 hadi 31 ni kuwa mungu alikuwa ame, ameumba kila kiumbe yeah. kila kitu pamoja yeah. na adamu na hawa kama viumbe vizuri sana so we see there in, in genesis 2 27 27 god breathed our life we didn't have we, we became a living soul after his breath we have the breath of god ah mwanzo 2 2 7 2 7 tunajua kuwa mungu alipumua pumzi yake kwenye nafsi nafsi na na mtu ama mwanadamu akafanyika nafsi hai and then god out of his love told adam and eve do not do not eat the fruit of the tree of knowledge of knowing evil good and na Mungu ni upendo Mungu kwa upendo wake akamwambia Adamu na Hawa msile katika msile tunda katika ule mti ule mti but they did that if they had not done that they would have lived eternally lakini walifanya hivyo kama wasingekula tunda lile wangeliishi milele now immediately after they disobeyed God in that 2:17 you can see quickly in chapter 3 how sin entered sasa punde tu walipokosa kumtii Mungu katika sura ya pili mstari wa 17 tunaona jinsi ambavyo da, dambi iliingia sura ya tatu, dambi ikaingia that is because they disobeyed god ni kwa sababu walikosa kumtii Mungu so every time we open a door it doesn't matter how small if you are holding a grudge you are offended what and what all things of the flesh you have opened the door for the enemy kila wakati unapofungua mlango kupitia dhambi haijalishi dhambi ni ndogo kiasi gani ni mlango ambao ibilisi anatumia kwa mfano uki uki ukikosa uki kusamee ukiwa na uchungu ndani ya moyo wako au unabeba makwazo mm. so 
we open doors. We say, let God's will be done. But are you walking in the spirit? Hivyo basi tunafungua mlango. Tunakiri na kusema kuwa acha mapenzi ya Mungu yatimie. Lakini je, wewe unatembea katika mapenzi hayo? But God, as you say, God is so good, is so loving. There is no evil in him. In Genesis 3:15, he promises salvation. Lakini jinsi ulivyosema Mungu ni upendo mwenye rehema anayesemea tunaona kuwa katika sura ya tatu ya kitabu cha mwanzo mstari wa 15 Mungu anafungua njia ya kutokea na hiyo njia ni wokovu and of course there he promises Jesus and we can see how in Jeremiah 31:31 to 34 and Isaiah 36 and, and Ezekiel 36 to 26 and 26 he promises he said I will take the heart of stone from you and I give you a heart of flesh basi hapo tunaona anamuahidi Yesu Kristo. Tunaona katika kitabu cha Yeremia 34. 31 hadi 34. Jeremiah 31. Yeremia 31 31 to 34. 31 mstari wa 31 hadi 34 anaahidi kuja kwa Yesu Kristo. Pia Ezekiel anasema kuhusu hilo. The kingdom Oh God's, God's love will be in our hearts no longer on tablets on stone tablets the law ufalme wa Mungu ni hivi torati ama sheria ya Mungu itaandikwa katika mioyo yetu na si katika mawe and all this is possible because of sacrificial death of Jesus Christ through the holy spirit na haya yote ni kupitia dhabihu ya Yesu Kristo pale msalabani sio kupitia kingine kile And so the whole Bible 316 John the whole story you know the whole story I was just giving you a touch now so when the Pharisees were asking Jesus in Luke 17:21 they asking where is the kingdom and he said the kingdom is where kingdom is within you it is not geographical it is in your heart what is in your heart uh, then let us go to the churches basi twende moja kwa moja kwa makanisa So then as I said I wanted to start with the people as you see them there on the screen. Kwanza nilitaka nianze na watu hao mnavyoona kwenye runinga. Yes, but then the spirit of God said no start with those ones you put last. Roho Mungu akanihudumia hebu naanza na wale ambao umeweka mwisho. What shocked me is the church in Taitira Jesus said you have love, you have faith and service. But you have allowed sexual immorality Kini you have cho- tolerated ah, because i thought when i love god i serve god i have faith what else kile tulishangaza ni kanisa la tiatra ambalo yesu anasema kuhusu kanisa hili upendo mnao na mnahudumiana lakini mmeruhusu na kuchukulia kirahisi dhambi ya washerati What are you tolerating in your life? It may be something you think is not important. Jesus sees it and he can't stand it. Ni nini ambacho unachukuliana nacho na kukikubali maisha ni mwako? Yesu unaweza kudhani kuwa ni kiraisi lakini Yesu anasema siwezi kubali hiki. And the good thing with him is that he commends the churches for what they have done. Jambo zuri ni kuwa Yesu pale ambapo kanisa linapaswa kusifiwa kwa mema waliyotenda anawasifu secondly he rebukes he, to, he tells them what you have done or not done cha pili ni kuwa yesu anawakemea kwa kile ambacho wamekitenda ama hawajakitenda and then the third part he tells you what action to take alafu sehemu ya tatu yesu anakuambia ni hatua gani ambazo unapaswa kuchukua i was asking people in bible study what is it that you are tolerating do you point out something that does not agree with the word of god ni nilikuwa nikauliza wanafunzi katika darasa la biblia ni kitu gani ambacho mmekubaliana nacho mmechukuliana nacho je mko tayari kukemea are you compromising are you complacent au unakubaliana unajiruhusu uwe vuguvugu hey so then let us read the church in Ephesus kwa hivyo tusome kuhusu kanisa la Efeso let us start from verse 1 because i saw i had written 4 but i think we start from verse 1 to 7 tuanze katika mstari wa kwanza hadi mstari wa saba uh, ufunuo sura ya pili mstari wa kwanza hadi wa saba kuhusu kanisa la Efeso please as you read try to apply it to yourself 
to want to find out what is it that you are complacent about. What are you, what are you sacrificing? What are you tolerating? What are you allowing in your life? Tunaposoma ebu jambo hili lichukulie maisha ni mwako. Jaribu kujiweka pale ni kitu gani ambacho wewe unakubaliana nacho na si cha Kristo. Kitu gani ambacho una kiruhusu na si cha Kristo. Revelation chapter 2 from verse 1 to the angel of the church of Ephesus. Yeah, thank you. To the angel of the church in, in Ephesus, Ephesus yeah. right these are the words of him who holds the seven stars yes in his right hand and walks among the seven golden lampstands i know your works your labor your patience in that you cannot bear those who are evil and you have tested those who say they are apostles and are not and have found them liars and you have persevered and have patience and have labored for my name's sake and have not become weary nevertheless i have this against you that you have left your first love remember therefore from where you have fallen repent and do the first works or else i will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent but this you have that you hate the deeds of the Nicol nicoletians which I also hate. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give to it from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. So you can see, Jesus tells them they are working hard, they have persevered, but he says, uh uh, you have forsaken. The first love. Kwa hivyo tunaona kuwa Yesu anawaambia kuwa na yajua matendo yako na taabu yako na subira yako na ya kuwa huwezi kuchukuliana na watu wabaya tena umewaya, umewajaribu wale wajiitao mitume na usio ukawaona kuwa waongo lakini ni neno juu yako ya kwamba umewacha upendo wako wa kwanza. Paul talks, talks to the church at Ephesus in, in Acts 20 and he tells them Watch out for false prophets. Katika matendo ishirini, Yesu anawa, anazungumza na, pa, Paulo anazungumza na kanisa la Efeso yeah. na anawambia kuwa ebu kuwe ni makini kuhusu manabi wa wongo. In 1.15 he says, the elders died and that is why the church became complacent. You hear that? Katika so you have to pass kwanza, the baton. Katika sura ya kwanza mstara kuminatano anasema kwa sababu wa ze. Mm. walikuwa wamefariki basi kanisa likaingia katika uvugu vugu so this is so important that we must have mentoring so that you have people who are going to walk the way you have walked apostle so that when you, when you are not here they will not go astray like the church in Ephesus sasa jambo hili ni muhimu sana hasa kuhusu malezi ili mtume watu watembe jinsi unavotembea na Siku ambao labda utakuwa haupo waendele hivyo vivyo hivyo I think all of us except children have fallen in love Na amini sote <laughs> kando na watoto ambao hawako hapa wameenda yes. Sunday school nadhani tumeingia kwenye mahusiano do, do you remember yeah. the person you loved you looked for a reason to mention his he or her name Mahaba. for no reason Mahaba Jesus wants us to have zeal to talk about him. Na amini kuwa mtu ambaye una upendo wa mahaba na yeye, basi kwa mara nyingine, mara kwa mara, jina lake umelitaja na umesema kusu yeye. Yesu anataka na sisi vile vile, tulitaje na ulisema jina lake. Yes, he, he wants us, because he says in Matthew 10, 32 to 33, if you are ashamed of me, if you don't tell others, others about me, I'm going to also to I'm going to be ashamed of you Dio, before Yesu my father. Yesu anataka hilo kwa sababu katika yeah. Mathayo 10 32 na 33 anasema kama utanionea haya hmm. na usua, utanionea ahibu na usiwaambie wengine kuhusu mimi 
basi na mimi pia sitasema kuhusu wewe mbele za baba yangu the church in Ephesus like that one in Laodicea was rich very rich because the city was also rich kanisa la Laodicea lilikuwa kanisa tajiri kwa sababu huo mji wa Laodicea ulikuwa ni mji tajiri so they began that and i asked the question wealth is not bad but is it did you get it from god or you had it and it has taken you away from Waibu, jesus kanisa lilikuwa tajiri na kumbuka yeah. jambo hili pia nimeliuliza utajiri sio mbaya mm. inategemea utajiri umepata wapi kwa yes. yesu au yeah. wapi lakini yeah. utajiri ule ambao utakuondoa kwa yesu basi kuna duku duku so he is very upset that they are they have become they they don't take a, a place a position for Jesus to say Jesus be praised be worshiped kwa hivyo amegadhabishwa kwa nini kwa sababu hawa hawajampa Yesu nafasi yake ya kusema hivi Yesu ni wewe usifiwe ni wewe uabudiwe so then have you forsaken your first love na kuuliza je umeuacha upendo wako wa kwanza I tell you as I read that uh, uh, I felt bad because I remember when I was first born again I was telling people about Jesus I was speaking the word of God everything I spoke was the word of God but when I came here I became what is the word I uh, self conscious and I said what are people going to say if I keep on talking about the word of God and so I began to not to talk about it which I could see that Nilipo, and I think Jesus wanted me Nilipo to know that soma hili nikaanza kujiuliza nikitetemeka je mm. mimi upendo wangu wa kwanza mm. upoje nakumbuka nilipookoka mara ya kwanza yeah. nilikuwa nilipookoka nilikuwa na msukumo wa kuambia watu kuhusu Yesu kila niliyekutana naye yes. nilikuwa namwambia kuhusu Yesu mm. lakini nilipokuja wakati fulani hapa nikaanza sasa kuju, kujiuliza watu watasemaje yeah. acha ninyamaze And, and we are told in 2 Corinthians 10:12 not to compare ourselves to anyone look to Jesus Paul says imitate me as i imitated Jesus katika wa Korintho wa pili yeah. sura ya kumi, tunaambiwa kuwa don't tusi, compare yourself tusigil, to others yeah tusijilinganishe na wengine paulo naye ameandika katika sehemu moja kwenye biblia akasema niigeni mimi jinsi nami ninavyomuiga yesu and that is why we are told in hebrews 12:1 to 3 that look and to Jesus for the joy set before him he was not he was not upset or didn't care about the suffering he was going to do the will of the father no Ando, matter what ndio maana wa ibrania 12 ukianza mstari wa kwanza hadi wa tatu pale imeandikwa tukiambiwa kuwa tumtazame Yesu Kristo yes. yes. ambaye yeye kwa sababu ya furaha iliyotiwa mbele yake basi hakuwa na aibu yoyote hata kwenda msalabani First Timothy 6:10 says money is the root of evil money is the root of evil but money itself how does it become a root of evil when you worship that money instead of the god who gave you that money Timotheo wa kwanza sura ya kwanza mstari wa 7 First Timothy 1 6:10 Timotheo wa kwanza sura ya 6 mstari wa 10 tumeambiwa kuwa Tamaa yeah. tamaa ya hela mm. tamaa ya hela ndio chanzo cha maovu yote And so we know if we obey Matthew 6:33 then we will be okay Na tunajua kuwa basi kama tutatii Mathayo 6:33 basi yote yatakuwa shwari If we obey Matthew 22:37 to 40 says the first and greatest commandment is to put god first in everything you do he must be your number one. basi kama tuta, love him kama tutatii mathayo 22 mstari wa 37 hadi 40 ambapo tumeambiwa kuwa amri ya kwanza yeah. kipaumbele ni kumpenda bwana mungu wako na kila kitu chako tukifanya hivyo basi tutakuwa tumempa mungu kipaumbele so you can you can examine yourself to see where you stand how do you spend your time How do you spend your money? How do you spend your energy? What takes most of your time? Unaweza wewe mwenyewe kujipitisha katika tathmini yeah. hii. Mm. Ukajitathmini na kusema kuwa, "Je, mimi muda wangu naotumia vipi? Hela zangu nazitumia vipi? 
nguvu zangu nazitumia vipi ni nini ambacho yes. kinachukua muda wangu mwingi hela zangu nyingi ama nguvu yangu nyingi when you wake up in the morning what do you do first unapoamka asubuhi ni jambo gani la kwanza unalofanya we need to ask ourselves because really god wants apostle you say god wants to take us places but we have we have to put ourselves right to go to those places. Lazima tujichunguze na kujua tumesimama wapi. Kama ulivyosema mtume, <laughs> Mungu ana mema mazuri kwa ajili yetu. Anataka atupeleke sehemu lakini lazima tuambatane naye. Wealth is not bad, but Ur- what it does, mali, worldly wealth without Jesus gives you false confidence. Mali sio mbaya, utajiri yes. sio mbaya. Mm. Lakini sasa hizi mali hapo limwenguni bila Yesu zitakupatia ujasiri yes. ambao hauna mashiko yes and if that is the case you will not be able to hold it because it will destroy you it's temporary na hali kama itakuwa ni hivyo maana yake utashindwa kubeba na kushikilia hali itakuwa mbaya anything you do without Jesus is nothing lolote ulitendalo bila Yesu ni bure and i was really surprised because these two churches this one and Laodicea I said to have been very rich in rich cities and these are the ones Jesus was so furious about. Nilishangazwa sana kwa sababu makanisa haya mawili, kanisa la Efeso na kanisa la Laodicea yalikuwa makanisa ambayo yalikuwemo kwenye miji ya utajiri. Lakini ndio makanisa ambayo Yesu anayakemea upande huo. In Ephesus they began to want to live like the world, to so just enjoy the riches and they didn't have much concern for the person who gave them la Efeso, the riches. Kanisa la Efeso lilikuwa linavutwa kuanza kuishi mm. kama watu wa dunia. Yaani utajiri upo lakini hawaweki kipaumbele kwa mambo ya Mungu. Wanataka waishi kama dunia tu. And the word there to those is repent. Remember, repent, come back, repent. Na neno pale ni tubu, toba, ndugu zangu, toba. And Jesus loves us and wants us to do the right thing but we cannot do it unless we are obedient na yesu anataka tufanye yaliyo sawa hatuwezi kutenda mema kama pasipo utii and he starts with obedience to our spiritual father here. na linaanzia kwa kumtii mzazi wetu wa kiroho apostle sits here and says stands here and tells people you are all involved you are in the same house <laughs> but we just What is it? God have mercy. Mtume anasimama hapa na kusema sote tuhusike. Sisi ni familia moja lakini tunakaa na kusema ngo hutaniona. We don't have to we don't have to be told if you love Jesus. Sio lazima tukumbushwe ama tuambiwe. That is your measure. Sio lazima tuambiwe. How much do you love him? Kama tunampenda Yesu, upendo wetu utapimwa na kipimo hicho. I can use myself as an example. When, when I was in, in the world in America, I was very rich, very rich. <laughs> I was not a Christian. And, and so I I, I, I I walk in a place I'm young, I'm beautiful, I'm educated. I say what can you tell me? Huh? tajiri <laughs> tajiri nikiwa binti mdogo nimesoma masomo yanayo i wanted to control if Nikitemea, people went to eat i was the one to buy utaniambia nini i didn't allow anyone to do anything you see that control that one nilitaka nishikilie usukani wa maisha yangu so you Kama, can see it gave me this uh, this it is a, what is it it is false identity false confidence false security most very very dangerous vitu hivi vilinipa msingi wa uongo au msingi uliojengwa kwenye mchanga kwa mfano ujasiri wangu ni wa uongo na ulinzi wangu ule na nilijiona nao katika mali, mali zangu ni, ni ulinzi wa uongo so then of course i was growing roses when i came to arusha i was the first one to get a range rover the very first ones i say hey, what can you tell me like that like that but when I can tell you the love of God even when all of them are gone I love him apostle I love him and I stand That's na, a thing that's a measure Nalipokuja Arusha muda huo niko hapo na hela zangu mimi ndo wa kwanza kununua gari hilo la Range Rover hapa Arusha nikiendesha najisikia kweli lakini mambo hayo yalipoondolewa na nikapata upendo wa Mungu sasa hivi naweza kusema nampenda Yesu hata kama sina vitu hivyo even if when it is here 
eh, it has been hidden somewhere for a purpose so that I can be humbled and have a contrite and broken Hata spirit. Hata kama vipo, vimefichwa sehemu, lakini najua kusuri lake ni kuwa ni nyekembele zake. But I thank zaidi. God because what I have received is much more, much more apostle, much more important than those who are the riches. Na mshukuru mungu kwa sababu mtume ni licho kipokea yeah. ni zaidi na zaidi ya hivyo vitu. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Furaha ya mungu ndiyo, ndiyo nguvu yangu. So, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with wealth, but if you have wealth and you don't know Jesus, you can say bye-bye to your eternal life. Sisemi kuwa utajiri ni mbaya, lakini kama unamali na utajiri ili hali umpendi yesu, basi aga uzima wa milele hauna. We mentioned that there are some servants of God. God raised them from nowhere, but then they became what? Proud. They, they forgot Jesus and the, the, the riches took them away. That is Tuna what Jesus kuwa, is talking about. Tuna watumishu wa mungu ambao mungu amawainua, mm. wamepata utajiri na hayote, lakini wana msahau yesu badai. You find na, they, they are falling into sin. All these things we are talking about, there is gold, glory, and girls. The three wicked sins that are from Satan himself. Yes? Girls. Girls. Basi, they can be men for girls, uh-huh. but for men, they are girls, gold, and glory. You uh-huh. take the glory, you want money, and they take you away. Satan uses them to take you away from Jesus. Mwalimu anasema kuwa, alisema mambo haya, ya kuwa kuna hayo maneno matatu ya G kwa kiingereza, yani unajitakia utukufu na sifa, mm. kuji uinuliwe uinu, wewe, alafu chapili, dahabu ama mali, na chatatu, mabinti. Na kwa mabinti, wanaume <laughs> hayo matatu ndio yanaaribu watu kuwaingiza katika dhambi so let us leave the church at Ephesus evaluate yourself according to what the word is saying let us talk about the church that was never given any good thing by Jesus Laodicea basi tusome kuhusu kanisa hili lingine la Laodicea kanisa ambalo walikuwa tajiri matajiri lakini Hakuna sifa hata moja. Yesu aliisema kuhusu kanisa hili, kanisa la Laodicea. So, there, there we are, Revelation 3:14 to Basi kitabu cha ufunuo sura ya tatu, mstari wa 20 na tuanzie tuanzie 14 to 22. Tuanze 14 hadi 22, kanisa la Laodicea. Listen very carefully. Remember, each of us is a temple of the Holy Ghost. Us, collectively, are his temple. If you are not right, you, the, the whole temple is defiled. Ebu sikilizo kwa makini, kwa sababu kila muja wetu hapa ni hekalu la Rome takatifu. Na kama hutajiweka vizuri hapa, wewe pia utanajisiwa na vitu hivi. Ufunuo tatu kuminane, kingereza. And to the angel of the church of Laodiceans, write, These things says the Amen, the faithful, the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. Mm. I could wish you were cold or hot. Mm. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth, because you say, I am rich, have become wealthy, and have need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire, that you may be rich, and with white garments, that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed, and anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore, be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and dine with him and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the, th- to the churches. You see there, the city, Laodicea was very rich, and the church was also very rich. Tazama hapa, kanisa, 
ni kuwa ule mji wa Laodicea ulikuwa mji tajiri kanisa nalo pia lilikuwa tajiri yeah, the banking industry they are dying you know dying of coloring you know dying not dying but dying d d y e i n g dying industry of ukiangalia katika uchumi wao mji huo ulikuwa na viwanda ulikuwa pia na mabenki ya kifedha wakati huo na mji huo pia ulikuwa na viwanda vya batik vile mm. and so but the, the bible says their work their, their water was bad the source of the water was bad sasa maandiko yanasema kuwa maji yao yalikuwa machafu mabaya kwa so, nini chanzo cha maji kilikuwa kichafu kilikuwa kibaya and so as the water came down it was neither hot nor cold and it was have you ever tried to, to take lukewarm tea sasa kwa sababu chanzo cha maji yaliyoingia katika mji ule yalikuwa ni maji sio mazuri uwezi kusema ni ya moto au ni ya baridi kwa sababu ya chanzo chake basi watu wale maji yao hukuweza kujua ni baridi au ni moto yalikuwa vuguvugu and that is Jesus is saying by the way i'm wearing red and, and the choir is wearing red which is the fire fire of the holy spirit that is the fire choir and we were together in the spirit i didn't know you were wearing red that is the fire fire of the holy spirit he wants us to be on fire for him holy spirit gives us passion for jesus also convicts us purifies us from sin and also gives us the power to deliver those three important parts when holy spirit is there and these things happen sasa basi ukiangalia leo nimevaa nyekundu kama vile waimbaji wa waimbaji wamevaa nyekundu huo ni moto wa roho mtakatifu tuko rohoni jamaa yes na kuna haya mambo matatu ambayo Mungu anatupatia yes. Mungu anataka tuwe moto yes. kwa ajili yake yeah. jambo la kwanza analokupa ni ule wivu wa kazi yake yeah, yeah. wivu wa nyumba yake mm. zile yeah? yeah, yeah. na pia anakupa nguvu yes. power yes and the first one is to also to, to take away the sin from us to purify us na pia anatutasafisha mambo hayo matatu moto nguvu na pia anatupatia anatupa neema ya kufanya wasafi and to deliver others to take jesus to the world na utakaso huo unatusaidia sisi tuweze kuwakomboa wengine tuwatoe duniani wamjie Yesu so it's not my coincidence or mistake apostle that you said the first january was to raise intercessors eh, and prayer warriors kwa hivyo this is the beginning mtume sio mm. kwa ajali ama kwa bahati tu ya kuwa umesema kuwa kuanzia mwezi wa kwanza yeah. unainua na kuwajenga waombezi waombaji hii ni imetoka kwa Mungu and, and everything everything happens through prayer you have said that there is no other way kila kitu kinatokea kupitia maombi na umetuambia hilo mara kwa mara as you have told us we approach god as our father in hebrews 4:16 na umetuambia kuwa tunamsogelea mungu kwanza kabisa kama baba yetu kulingana na ibrania 4:16 also in, in lord's prayer matthew 6:9 hata pia is our father in heaven katika ile sala ya bwana katika um Matayo 6 kuanzia mstari wa 9 yeye ni baba yetu wa mbinguni and we do this to obtain grace and mercy na tunamsogelea Mungu kama baba ili tuweze kupata neema na rehema we also approach him as our friend lakini pia tunamsogelea Mungu kama rafiki yetu as our friend we are looking for advice we are looking for counsel kama rafiki yetu Mungu tunakwenda kupata kwake ushauri na pia wosia and that is why Psalm 25 12 to 14 says I will reveal my secrets and my covenant to those who fear me who, will, who will revere me mtunzi wa zaburi ya 25 katika mstari wa 12 hadi 14 amesema kuwa what did he say he will reveal his covenant and secrets to those who revere him atafunua agano lake na siri zake kwa wale ambao ni those who fear him have reverence for him they live according to his word wanaomcha mungu wanaomtii mungu yes. na wanaotetemeka mbele ya neno lake god is good even in psalm 32:8 and and isaiah isaiah 48:17 he says i will instruct you on the way you should go 
Mungu ni mwema yeah. katika Zaburi 32 mstari wa 8 anasema nitakuelekeza njia ya kufuata njia ya kuenenda. So he wants the best for us but he will not force us. Kwa hivyo Mungu anataka kile kilicho bora kwa ajili yetu lakini hata tulazimisha. But he is saying he can snap out he can take out the lamp which is the holy spirit. Lakini, where, can, where can we go without the holy spirit? Lakini pia Mungu anasema anaweza kuizimeleta akatoa vile vinara kwetu. Sasa maana yake ni kuwa anamuondoa Roho Mtakatifu. Una utafanya nini ukiwa huna Roho Mtakatifu? Utakwenda wapi? So Jesus is telling us and the church. I want each and every one of us and the church collectively to think of what Jesus would tell us. Sasa Yesu anatuambia mimi pamoja na wewe pamoja sote tuweze kusikiliza yes. na kuwa makini. Mm. Yesu anatuambia nini haswa? Yes. And so he is telling them come and buy they had gold a lot of gold Sasa anawaambia njooni mnunue walikuwa na dhahabu yes. lakini anawaambia njooni mnunue dhahabu They want now Jesus has real gold which is righteousness and eternal life he tells them come and, Sasa Yesu and, and get this one ana dhahabu halisi ambayo ni haki na uzima wa milele anawaambia acha nena ya kwenu hiyo yeah. njooni mchukue halisi ambayo mimi nitawapeni And the good thing with with him is he uses what people are going through to give his message. Jambo zuri ni hili. Yesu anatumia zile hali ambazo watu wanazipitia ili afikishe na kuwasilisha ujumbe wake. Those things which are relevant to them. Mambo ambayo wanayaelewa. So that is why now the water they are lukewarm they have no taken they have not taken a stand for jesus na ndio maana pia anasema kuhusu vugu vugu maji yale yaliyoingia katika mji huo watu hawa walikuwa vugu vugu hawana msimamo katika yesu apostle you taught us about the samaritans they were half breed they were vugu vugu mtume um, ulitufundisha kuhusu samaria walikuwa mchanganyiko kwa hivyo tutasema walikuwa katikati walikuwa vugu vugu So this is he takes it so seriously that he says he will vomit. That is bad. Kwa Yesu jambo hili analichukulia kwa kumaanisha anasema hivi nitawatapika. Self sufficiency because of the wealth. Ile hali ya kujitosheleza mwenyewe ni kama vile umejitosheleza kwa sababu ya mali zako. Independence you say uwe huru. I can do it. I don't Mini need Jesus. Mimi mwenyewe sihitaji msaada wa mtu mwingine nitafanya. And good as he is in, in Revelation 3:20 he says he is standing at the door of your heart na Mungu ni Mungu Yesu ni mwema sana anasema katika ufunuo 3:20 anasema nasimama mlangoni mwako nikibisha open fungua and if you open i will come and sit he will come and no. sit with you ukifungua mlango ataingia akae na wewe ale pamoja na wewe Is he knocking the door down? Je, anabisha. Does he have to knock the door down to come in? Na je, jamani lazima Yesu abishe ndo afunguliwe? I, I tell you. <laughs> Second Corinthians 7:10. Wa Korintho wa pili sura ya saba, mstari wa kumi. Apostle Paul tells us to have godly sorrow. Mtume Sauli anatuambia tuwe na ile toba ile ya, ya kiungu that ya, sorrow once you recognize how filthy you are as Isaiah 64:6 our righteousness na kutubu kwa kiungu ni pale ambapo unaangalia maisha yako na unasema kwa kweli nimepungukiwa na unajuta ni kujuta kwa kiungu ambapo unatamani na unakuwa na kiu ya haki ya Mungu he tells us not to have worldly sorrow when you when you say ah what will people think about me when you are just thinking about yourself but this godly sorrow brings you to repentance you see that you are nothing you are sinner in need of a loving god anasema tusiwe na kujuta kama kwa dunia kule ambapo unajisikia vibaya tu alafu uchukui hatua yoyote yes. kujisikia vibaya tu alafu unabaki vile vile lakini kujuta kwa kiungu ni kujuta kule ambapo baada ya kujutia makosa yako unachukua hatua ya kuacha hayo makosa na kubadilisha maisha yako So the question is what do you think Jesus will write to each one of us and collectively to Zion City Church Swali, blessed as we are 
Swali ni hili basi je unawaza Yesu atakuandikia wewe au mimi barua ya aina gani atasema nini kuhusu wewe lakini pia jumla kama kanisa tumebarikiwa kwa vingi lakini je Yesu ataandika barua ipi kutuhusu how are we showing diligence how will we get maximum harvest if there is no diligence tunadhihirisha vipi bidi yetu na tutawezaje kuyaza na kuongeza mavuno yetu kama hatutatendea kazi bidi ya kweli Jesus wants us to be holy as he is holy he wants us to be perfect as he is perfect what are we going to do Yesu anahitaji tuwe wasafi na watakatifu kama jinsi alivyo tuwe wakamilifu kama jinsi alivyo holiness utakati utaua as two aspects utaua ama utakatifu una vipengele vipi holiness of god is the fact that he is set apart there is nobody like him utakatifu wa mungu ni kuwa ni mungu yeye ni mtakatifu na hakuna mwingine kama yeye the second aspect is he hates sin na kipengele cha pili ni kuwa mungu anachukia dhambi he is talking to us anasema nasi sasa in john 14:21 jesus says if you are showing our love if you love god my father and i will come and Sup, stay with you live Yo, in you Yohana 14:21 Yesu anasema kama utatii na unampenda Mungu yeah. una, unanitii basi yeye na baba yake watafanya makao yao ndani yako So this church in Tetra I started with that had la Tetra ambalo nilianza nalo had faith love and service Kanisa hili lilikuwa na imani lilikuwa na upendo lakini pia walihudumiana Huduma Huduma Oh yeah <laughs> Okay so and, and so but what was wrong they tolerated What are you I still ask you this question What are you tolerating coming late to church people not coming to bible study at all have almost at the end of the service people are coming what is it is that diligence please Eh, is it i'm telling you this thing pierced me and i think that is why the enemy was fighting it because i reached a place where i didn't want to, to talk about it but no lakini kanisa hili kuna kitu walipungukiwa yeah. kanisa hili kwa mfano tunaweza kusema leo hivi mm. jamani hatuji ibada kwa muda mm. hatuji mafunzo ya biblia kwa muda yani kama vile tupo hatupo hatuhusiki kamilifu are we not lukewarm Could we be lukewarm? Je, hiyo sio maana ya uvuguvugu? Je, si kuwa vuguvugu hiyo? I, I, I sometimes I drive through the, the, the town near that uh, Rutheran church there. And it is full by seven people have you can't find a place to park. Mara nyingine naendesha gari mjini pale karibu na kanisa lile la Kilutheri. Saa moja kamili unapata hauna sehemu ya kuegeza gari lako. Watu wamejaa. We are holy spirit filled. Are we not? Sasa nasema sisi So why can't we? Why can't we obey? Sasa kwa nini tusiwe zaidi yao? I just remember one day that bishop soon after I was asked to, to teach bible study and I I didn't know what I was saying whether it was going to to affect the bishop. I said I woke up at 2 to prepare for this class and the people are not here. Do you know when he came here to convince he shed tears. I felt bad. I say hey I should have known better not to say it but because it really hurt him that people were just coming wasting as if they are going to their next door neighbor eh? an old friend an ex wife eh? no love there <laughs> Nakumbuka siku moja nilisema jambo hili nikamwambia askofu punde tu baada kuteuliwa niwe nikiongoza mafunzo ya Biblia kila asubuhi Jumapili Nikamwambia askofu saa 8 za usiku niliamka nikaandaa ujumbe huu Lakini nimekuja hapa nakuta hamna mtu katika darasa hili Hilo jambo lilimgusa sana askofu Alipokuja hapa askofu John alidondokwa na machozi wakati alipokuwa akiliambia yeah. kanisa Nikasema eh kama ningelijua sigemwambia kuhusu hayo Yes But he had a point. Do we go to work on time? Lakini alikuwa na maana yake. Je, 
kazini hatuendi kwa muda unaotakiwa who is more important to you your Sasa, work or god ni nani muhimu kwako kazi yako zaidi ya mungu and are we doers of the word na je sisi twalitendea kazi neno we just hear the word we don't take it to heart we actually don't live according to the word that we hear what is that au tunasikia neno lakini hatulihifadhi katika mioyo yetu tunalisikia hatulitendei kazi i'm only giving the message if you dislike me i'm sorry but i'm obeying the holy spirit so that's what i was told to say mimi hapa nawashilisha ujumbe tu kama hutanifurahia samahani okay. namti roho mtakatifu but i tell you it is time for us to go back to those churches because that is not for that time the word of god is living the, what is written in that that seven churches to those seven churches it is to us because the bible is living it's alive Lakini, don't say it's history it is us naambieni muda umefika wa sisi kuyarudia yale makanisa saba katika ufunuo tuanze kujifunza kutoka kwayo kwa sababu yaliyoandikwa pale sio historia sio ya zamani leo la Mungu liko hai na linaishi huu ujumbe ni wa kwetu leo hii you cannot love jesus you cannot go there with half hearted a christian who is just half hearted wezi kumpenda yesu kwa jinsi ya kwa, kana kwamba wewe ni mkristo ambao upo haupo uko ndani uko nje uwezi kwenda bila moyo wako wote lazima uende you, you can wote. say about your children it is their life it is their independence no are they living according to the word of god what lifestyle is that without jesus there is no independence without him that is a yoke of satan kwa mfano kuhusu watoto utasema kuwa ah wamechagua wenyewe wacha waishi maisha yao hapana tunajua kuwa no. hiyo ni nira ya yes. ya ibilisi yes. ibilisi ndiye anayodanganya watu wasiwe katika Kristo asilimia mia. Oh, so now I've got I've talked about Lydosia. Jesus did not say anything good about them. I will vomit you. Think about that. Are you going to be vomited? I don't like I thought so. Sasa uh, kwa sasa nimezungumzia kuhusu kanisa la Laodicea. Je, wewe hebu jiulize swali hili. Kama Yesu ataongea na mimi, atasema kuhusu kunitapika, atanitapika? I was shocked when I heard the pastor and say people become they they God promotes them they get cars and then they leave the church. Well, what is that? Nishangaa sana yeah? kile ambacho mchungaji Ainea alisikia siku moja akisema ya kuwa watu wana Mungu anawainua wanapata vyeo wanunua magari baadaye wanaliacha kanisa wanaondoka. So you 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 are here to get God's blessings his presence and not his presence je uko hapa kupata baraka tu yani unautaka mkono wa Mungu lakini hutaki uso wake these are the questions we need to ask ourselves haya ndo maswali ambayo tunapaswa kujiuliza unfortunately then the priority has gone to the churches but you can read those other things these people like paul he was he was converted just like that suddenly and he began to preach the gospel because he was full of fire we need fire Sasa, we need fire kwa ajili ya muda nitakuomba sitaweza kupitia makanisa yote tafadhali pata muda ukayapitia haya makanisa yote lakini nawakumbusheni kuhusu paulo paulo alipobadilishwa tu akaanza kumtukia, kumtumikia mungu akaanza kusema kuhusu kristo the apostle to the gentiles in acts 9:15-16 jesus mm. says i must show him how he will suffer for me Mtume and he suffered kwa mataifa katika matendo mitume 9:15 16 akasema nitamuonyesha nitamu, mambo ambayo anapaswa kuteseka kwa ajili yangu na hakika paulo alteseka and so but he know that to live is to die he who lived for jesus is not i who lives but him in me crucified he loved him no matter what lakini katika yote hayo tunagundua kuwa paulo alimpenda yesu kwa sababu aligundua yeye ili aishi lazima afe na kuishi ni katika kristo so then as as i said i had i wanted to start with all those people there the samaritan woman zacchaeus paul the jailer cornelius but those are people who are saved and their households remember 
you, God does not save, save the whole household. You have to come to him in faith. You, individually. He doesn't save the whole family. You have, have to go in your faith. Nizungumze kusu wote hao wale balilishwa. Kwa mfano, yule mlinzi ategereza, Zakayo, Paulo, mwanamke msamaria katika Yohana 4, uh, Cornelio na nyumba yake. Lakini tazama, cha muhimu cha msingi ni hiki. Unapomjia Yesu, hauji kama hamji kama familia nzima. Hamji kama nyumba nzima. Kwanza, unakuja peke yako. Sio kanisa zima kwanza. Wewe peke yako njoo kwa Kristo kwanza. In the story of Zacchaeus we see that he had there was in his case it is more of restitution. He, he, he was touched to return what he had stolen from the people. Restitution more than restoration although he got salvation. Salvation has come to your house today. I will dine with you. Kwa hali ya Zakayo tunaona kuwa ilikuwa ni kurejesha kuliko sana kurejeshwa. Yaani yeye alipoguswa, aligundua kuwa yeah. utakaso wake unakuja kupitia yeye kuviregesha yes, yes. vitu ambavyo alikuwa amevichukua kutoka watu. Kwa hivyo akaviregesha vile vitu akapata amani na uzima wa Kristo. And we see that inward transformation came through outward action. Na tunaona he returned what he had stolen to the country. Katika hali ya zakayo hiyo ya kurejesha vitu vya watu tunapata kuwa kubadilishwa kwa ndani kulianzia kwa yeye kwanza kabisa kurejesha vile vitu vya watu ambavyo alikuwa amevichukua. So apostle with all due respect and with all I would ask you kindly to pray for the church to for God to forgive us and bring us back spiritually before we can go looking for material uh, and physical restoration. Kwa heshima, na kwenye kevu basi nitakuomba mtume, uje uliombe kanisa. We need it. Kanisa kwanza litafute kurejeshwa kiroho, kuliko kwanza kutafuta mali na utajiri urejeshwa huo. Kwanza tuanze na kurejeshwa kiroho, kabla kurejeshwa katika mwili. We need a revival. We need the fire of the Holy Ghost. Tunaitaji uwisho. Tunaitaji moto wa Roma Takatifu.